Let's look at changing the order of integration in a triple integral. Um, I'm going to take this integral and I'm going to set it up in two alternate ways. And as with a double integral, the key is not to try to do it just directly from this algebraic setup to another algebraic setup. Um, it's to really understand the picture and the geometry and then, and then kind of reset up from the geometry in a different order. So we need to figure out what this looks like. And one key thing is to look at the floor plan. So one of the metaphors I have here is that these outer two variables is a house, and we're integrating some function over a three-dimensional house. And these two variables you want to think of as the floor plan, and then this is the z is the up and down variable that talks about like the roof and the floor. And so just looking at these two outer integrals tells us the floor plan. So x is going from 0 to 1, and y is going from 0 to x squared. So it's a fairly standard example of a floor plan like this, and it's sliced up in this way. And that's going up to 1. Okay. So in particular, we can make a st we can start making a list of of equations, which are really important. There's kind of this setup, and then there's the, an equational setup. Um, let me put it just right here. We've got x equals 0 and x equals 1. They can be thought of as the edges of the, the uh, or well, actually, x equals 0 really doesn't matter. What we're seeing is that x equals 0 is kind of unnecessary because it's squeezed into here. But x equals 1 is really important because that really is an edge of the floor plan. And that's going to become a wall in the three-dimensional picture, whose projection onto x, y is this guy. Okay, We're seeing that y equals x squared and y equals 0 are important. And the x equals 0 is really just saying where these guys, that we should stop where they intersect. So there's sort of a natural boundary there. And that's going to show up in the picture. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the floor plan. I can actually start drawing that here. And I'll, I've got um, MATLAB up to do a pretty picture in a minute, but I want to do it by hand first. Okay, so here's the floor plan going out to 1, 1. Um, I'm not going to shade it in because we're going to get too busy if we do that. And now this stuff is controlling the floor and the roof. Z, for any particular point in this floor plan, this just says that Z goes from 0 to Y. Now this is Z equals 0 is very nice because it says that the floor plan that I drew, I actually drew it on the XY plane in the three dimensions, that's not misleading. That actually is literally the floor of this object, and that's not always true, but here it is. Okay, And let's put that in, Z equals 0. That is going to be one of the boundary equations or boundary surfaces here. And then the, the roof is going to be z equals y. So here's the floor, and here's the roof. In this perspective, where we think of z is, is traditionally the up and down, we're going to switch that perspective in a minute. Okay. So um, now we really want to draw this. And we could just draw all these surfaces. This, this is a plane, this is a plane, this is a parabolic cylinder, this is a plane, this is a slanting plane. But it's really nice to get the corners of this object and some idea of the edges, and then the planes are going to kind of come with that, or the surfaces are going to come with that. So the corners are really crucial. That's where we take triples of these and intersect. Well, we, we can already see a few of those. When z equals y, hit z equals 0, um, that's going to be this slanting plane. There is a slanting plane here. I'm not going to draw it in yet, but there's a slanting plane that comes up. z equals y. When it goes over in y, it goes equally up in z. That intersects the floor. So this is an inter interesting thing that the floor and the roof meet. And so it squeezes down into a wedge on the left. Okay. And so, for example, we're going to get 0, 0, 0 is one of the corners because that's certainly satisfied if y equals x squared, y equals 0, z equals y, or z equals 0. Um, this guy is going to be one of the corners. 1, 0, 0 is totally legal. That's where x equals 1, y equals 0, and z equals y. Okay, so we've got the origin. We've got 1, 0, 0. This guy is one of the corners because it's just the intersection of the floor with this corner of the floor plan, 1, 0, 0. Okay. Uh, sorry, one, 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 zero. Not bad. And then there's just one more corner, and that's where you're standing at this part of the floor plan. X equals one, Y equals one, and instead of choosing the floor, you choose the roof, and that's one, one, one. Okay, so that's up here. 
Okay, and there's going to be an edge going down from there because this wall, x equals 1, is going to be a front wall, and that's going to intersect an edge coming from y equals x squared. That's this, this is going to be a curving wall above y equals x squared, which is going to be the trickiest part to draw, but that's going to be where they intersect there. There's going to be an edge here where z equals 0 and z equals y intersect. Okay, and then there's going to be an edge connecting these two corners. Usually, for any two corners, there's usually an edge connecting them, but not guaranteed. You really have to think about it. Okay, that's going to be where the x equals 1, the front wall, intersects the sloping roof. Okay, and we're almost ready. We're almost done. There's just one other funky edge, which is where this curving wall, y equals x squared, it's a parabolic cylinder coming in like this, intersects the sloping roof. Clearly, these are the two more most complicated of these five equations. Where they intersect is going to be the most complicated thing. So I'm just going to freehand that coming up, and then I'm going to suggest this curving wall. Now that's in the back, and we'll see a better picture uh, in a minute. Now there's a, a front wall here, and then a sloping roof, and I'll shade that in. So I kind of tried to go corners, edges and then shade in some faces and then the bulk the three-dimensional object is just what's inside we don't actually explicitly draw that at all so that's an important principle is to sh focus on the lower dimensional information as much as possible okay just to get a picture there's a fair amount of work here um, but that's really the key work okay so now i want to get the setup um let me see if i can squeeze it in here i want to get a setup for the integral of f dx dy dz okay and so now this is going to be I'm going to put this in the floor plan column I'm going to try to do this all in one screen but I don't know if I really can uh, so now it's going to be y and z are the floor plan variables and so that's going to be equivalently projecting this into the plane of the this board the yz plane Okay, and what are we going to get? Well, it looks like we should just see this big triangular wall in front. Okay, so let's kind of guess that and make sure it's borne out by the algebra. Um, for in, that, that, would be, that would claim that for any y between 0 and 1, and as long as z is less than y, we're going to be able to, to have something in this region. The other metaphor I like is once we've, we've thought about a direction of the floor plan in a direction that's going to be kind of our new up and down direction. Here's going to be x. I think of that as a, a direction to stick shish kebabs through the thing and try to figure out exactly what part of the shish kebab is, is stuck in the object. Where does it enter and where does it leave this object? Well, um, as long as z is less than, is between 0 and y, this, these are legal. And as long as y is between 0 and 1, then we're in these limits, and so it should be. It really should be okay. And visually, you can usually trust your visual intuition if you think you've got a good picture here. So there's the projection of this thing. Okay, so let's set that up. That's going to be z. I decided to do a y z instead of a z y, and so z goes from zero to one here. Okay, and notice that's that top corner. It was really one one one, and now in this picture, that's just we're going to forget the x coordinate, and that's going to be one one. And y goes from z to 1. Okay, so that's the floor plan. And now we need to figure out how those shish kebabs work. Okay, the biggest value for x, because this is a very special object, regardless of y and z, it's just hitting that flat plane, x equals 1. And then the smallest value, oh, I should show you, I should start turning the MATLAB picture in a second here. The smallest value for x is where it's coming in, uh, entering on that curving wall. Okay, so what's going on with that? Um, that's where x, that's where it hits this guy. That's the algebra that, that determined that curving wall. And so that's going to be where y equals x squared, or we need to solve x is the square root of y. So x is going to go from the square root of y to 1. So let's see, let's look at the picture. Oops. Um, let me come over here. So here's, uh, all I was showing before was the, the front wall, x equals 1, with the red. There's the sloping roof. Uh, dark blue on the bottom is the floor, which does match actually the floor plan. Just a section under y equals x squared. And then the funkiest thing is the curving wall, the light blue, which has a curving projection on x and y, and then has that slanty top. And so it's this kind of wedge-shaped parabolic thing. 
Okay, so right now what we're doing is we're observing that if we look, if we project it in the along the x direction, then we just see that big red triangle, and that's the floor plan. And then when we think about the shish kebabs coming in on the light blue for the smallest value of x and out on the red, and the light blue that's determined by the y equals x squared or x equals root y because we decided to express x in terms of y and then biggest would be x equals 1. Okay, so now let's do one more. It's going to be pretty similar, but we might as well do all three floor plans. So that's going to be x and z. So we're going to do a setup f, let's say dy dx dz. So now in x and z, that's uh, projecting onto the xz plane. Let's go ahead and see what MATLAB thinks about that. Um, I'm going to look at it. You, we really want to look at it from here. Look at it from smaller values of y looking towards bigger values of y to not get things backwards. And that's we're, all we're going to see is that sloping top. Oops, it's getting a little confused. Okay, there we go. We're going to see, we're going to be looking at that yellow roof in the MATLAB picture. And it's going to have a flat bottom, but then that curving top, because the, when the slanting roof intersects the curving wall, it's going to have a slanting top. Okay. So, how is that going to work? Okay. Well, x is definitely going from 0 to 1, and we're still seeing that top corner. That's, that was 1, 1, 1, so now it's x equals 1, z equals 1. We're seeing the right-hand side. We're just seeing that front wall. What was the front wall, the red wall, on edge? And then what's the equation of the curving top? It's not too hard to get, but it's, it does involve one of the fundamental algebraic things here, which is that was uh, the z equals y was a, a yz relationship that created the yellow top, and the yx relationship, y equals x squared, can, created the wall. The edge is where those intersected. So it's where both of these equations are true, and what do I not care about to draw this picture? I don't care about y. So it's a very common thing. We take two equations and we combine them, in this case it's very simple, z equals x squared, and we forget that intermediate variable that actually was the, the link between them, because in this picture, projecting into the xy plane exactly means just ignoring y. So, it's just z equals x squared, is the, the punchline, which is sure as heck looks like in the MATLAB picture. Okay, so um, now we just have to set this up, and then we just have to figure out what y does, and we're almost done. So z is going from 0 to 1 still, in this, so setting up the outer two is just setting up a double integral here. Good practice in that. Now, again, x is, we're, we're slicing it up this way with x as a function of z. So x does go to 1 at the top again, but we have to solve this one more time. It really, x equals root z is how it's going to show up. Okay. And then, okay, now we go back to the three-dimensional picture. Now we've got a shish kebab going in a small... as Values of y increase, increase, increase. They're illegal, illegal. Okay, they become legal when they hit the sloping roof, and they stop being legal when they hit the curving wall. So here, one more trip to the three-dimensional picture. They're coming in on, on yellow and out on light blue. Maybe from here, yeah. So they're coming in. Y is increasing. Boom, that's where it activates, and then boom, that's where it stops being legal. Well, that, z equals y, is the... Um, the roof, and so that's now the minimum value, so that's y equals z, and then here it's where y equals x squared. That's the light blue. Okay, So that's a couple of examples of how to switch the order in a double integral. It can get more complicated than that, but I'm, that's probably plenty complicated for a first exposure.